Hey VC, we are listening to Funkadelic's Maggot Brain, and this is an album that a lot of you guys probably know. This is the Impulse, I'm sorry, not Impulse, this is for the Four Men for, with Beards free pressing, and I know it's a very popular album of theirs, and I never really gave it the time, so I've been re-listening to it a lot recently, which I enjoy. Maggot Brain! Uh-oh, who's that? <laughs> You'll never guess. Mary's back. Show them the ring. Oh my gosh. You have you to check it? this out. Whoop. I'll do a close up. Check that out. Keep that diamond in focus. I know. He did good. No help from me. I love it. So the first one, two, three, four, five, seven. Seven before the last four were done when me and Mary took a trip to Blower Rock and Boone. And the first fire from a Goodwill we went to that was in Blowing Rock. So, um, <clears throat> I'll start off show them. Put them in order where I thought was really the cool stuff. This is a lady named Candy. And her real name is Candy Long. And it's on CMP Recordings from 1976. And it is like a Christian themed record. And thing with Christian albums, if you guys know, you go to thrift stores, at least around here, there's always tons and tons of Christian albums and religious albums, and you just sort of have to be able to find the ones that, you know, if for only a quarter, like, it might be worth getting the ones that might look, if it looks particularly good to me, because of maybe a really cool f cover, or if I like the lyrics that are shown in the back, then I might decide to go with it. Um, this album is called What Does a Woman Need? So obviously it's very easy for me to relate to. <laughs> so that was the first one so it's not, not a big of a deal I haven't listened to it enough um, out of the two ladies I got this is the one I really got more into right away um, this is a woman named Rhoda Curtis and it's just her self-titled album I really really love the cover so I decided I want to get right away because I love the black and white contrast with the red apple and my interpretation is that she's like Snow White and the Evil Queen all in one in this picture yeah and it's the cool apple back in the back. And I like am in love with the very first song called Jordan. Um, it sort of has like, a little bit of a like, religious theme, but the album's not really like that. So it's not the whole album. So it sort of keeps it from straying too much into the usual. But there's some really cool titles and songs you can get, I was into right away. Like um, Questions, Rocket Ship, The Candle, Mama Oh Mama, Daydream Sunday. It's just really cool. I really enjoy this one. And this is on... United Artists, and it has the original lyrics to you and everything like that. This was cool. Now this one is like, this is the first time last night, and I've had this for a few weeks, and this was really, really awesome. It's the first thing I saw there, it was a perfect shape, and I was like, sweet. So it's the soundtrack to Psycho 2, and it's in perfect condition. This is probably like the one I probably would keep the most at, like I'd be the happiest about out of my um, soundtrack collection. Wow. Um, it's done by Jerry Goldsmith, and there's a really cool write-up back here. And it talks about how the original guy was Bernard Herman, um, and they obviously want to keep that. It says, although my major efforts had gone toward recapturing the tonal quality of the original picture, that hybrid of horror, thriller, gothic, and black comedy, Cycle 2 had its own personality and deserved its own score. Um, so that Jerry Goldsmith, this guy who did it, is really, really well known. He did the Planet of the Apes score, the Wind, um, the Wind and the Lion. He did Alien, The Omen, Coma. A Patch of Blue, Chinatown. Um, so they said in his later albums that um, he had this romantic quality of his scores and that this romantic quality verging on Impressionism. So it seemed to be bursting through this stuff. So it's really nice because it's cool because it starts off with the original murder shower music. Like, do, do, do. But then it goes into these four or five minute songs. They're like a really, really like underneath like a really cool romantic quality that sort of mixes that really cool aspect of psycho music with like romance and melancholy and eeriness all in one mm. and it's really really a really strong composition so it's really cool stuff i'm really happy with that i probably listened to that before i went to these ones just put in, but um this is i love the cover of this so i wanted to get it right away this is a classical um composer whose name is debussy and the album is called La Mer. So I thought the cover was really, really nice looking, and I just like the La Mer because it makes me think. I think La Mer means the ocean in French. The sea. 
the yeah. sea. Yeah, and there's a Nine Inch Nails song I love called La Mer. So in general, like it's always when I see it, when I see something called the sea, I'm always gonna feel like it might have something cool to it, you know. It's on a record label called Columbia Special Project, so I think it's part from Columbia. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember when we listened to this, the first time we got it, this was much more like, smoother and more relaxing as opposed to the other one. Um, and the other side has another thing of his called Iberia. This, I was really excited to get this one here because um, the main thing was that the record label it's on. It's another classical record from a composer named Albert Roussel, if I'm saying it right. I would think it's Roussel, not Russell. Roussel. Um, and it is Symphony Number no. 3 in G minor and Symphony Number no. 4 in A. And what I thought was really cool about it is that most of us know Epic records from being like, you know, still around now. The first thing I ever heard from Epic was like, first two albums from Korn. So they do a lot of rock stuff, and I thought this was really cool because I've never actually seen um, an Epic that... It was an epic record that was um, a classical record, and it was the white radio station copy, like a promotional, a white promotional copy. So I got it simply to have, have that because I don't really know much research on it. I thought it'd be really cool to have it. So I don't know if anyone can let me know if they ever know much about Epic having that type of stuff. Um, now these two are. You know, what's the name of the record store we went to again? Um, Fat Cats. Fat Cat Records in Boone, that's right in the middle of Boone where Appalachian State is. That's P-H-A-T, I P -H -A -T. think. P-H-A-T. Yeah. Like P-H-I-S-H. <laughs> and these are two albums we got. Um, the first one is from the band 10CC, 100CC, and uh, I always like see their records and I don't really care too much, but I always thought they sound pretty cool. And the reason why I was excited to get this one, it was only like a buck, was because it has the song called The Worst Band in the World, which is the sample that Dilly uses to open up the Donuts album. Mm -hmm. So I always knew that like, if I saw like you know the original record that he found the song from, I would go ahead and get it. Mm -hmm. So I was really excited to get that one. Cool. We're the worst band in the world, but we don't give up. Woo! Um, this is David Ruffin, the other one I got, Who I Am. When I was in like my last year of college and another year when I stayed there, I really got into 70s soul music because of like people like Jay Dilla and other hip-hop producers, and I got really interested in finding out where their samples came from and how they flipped them. So I got really into that 70s um, soul and R&B, and David Ruffin was one of the ones I got into, and I really loved this album. Um, I always sing with the title track, so. How's our time? We're at almost eight minutes. Oh, that's cool. We're good. I only got four left. Um... YouTube decided to cut off my time, so you guys have all won the battle of getting no more longer videos, because um, I got a copyright infringement thing put to me. Uh oh. It was for Michelle Shocked and her music group. Okay, well, it was people. so silly, because all I did was just show the album. I didn't even play anything, so like, how serious can it be? How on um, earth did they recognize that? So for They're making reason, it really hard for us to promote their artists. Yeah, I can't even I show the record really cover. Them the same. That's crazy. Um, so this, I'll show these. These are the four I got the other day from the lunchbox. Me and Mary went, and Mary, I mentioned to Mary, I wish I'd like, tell her like, oh, you should hear this. It's so good. And I was telling her how much I loved Alicia Keys album, The Element of Freedom. And then coincidentally, she went to the used section and randomly found a used copy of that same album, which isn't that likely to come across. A Double LP for only like seven bucks and of Alicia like, Keys. Like, really awesome, newer one. light purple vinyl. Mm-hmm. He was so jealous. It was, but I was glad because I feel like it was like me and Mary doing a dig where I was like, ah, oh, she got it first. It's okay, though. Once we're married, it'll be part yours. Mm-hmm. This is a gentleman named McCoy Tyner. It's called Sahara. And it looked really interesting to me, and the write-up looked really interesting, and I love how, like, the first side is four songs. It was called Ebony Queen, A Prayer for My Family, Valley of Life and Rebirth, and how the second side is just this one 23-minute song called Sahara. He's a piano player, and I found out from the guy that was talking to us when we checked out that he was really well known for playing in John Coltrane's court hmm. quartet, and he was on the um, My Favorite Things album, and I did a little research today and just saw, he was from 1972, I saw that he was like, this is like considered like his greatest album, which is awesome, which I didn't really know, it was a blind buy, and it's also on this album label called Milestone, and the guy also at the, at the desk was telling us how it basically is, there's just nothing that he's ever heard of Milestone that wasn't good, so it's just a really great label, so... Has this I'm jamming. Woo! I like the I like the pumpkin delicate. It's nice. So, okay, I'll stop. You go, you go on. 
<laughs> well, I don't want to make them dizzy. So this is um, Brother Stephen, Baptist Girls, and I went out on the whim and got this. I heard one track for a little I bit like from that Mary. one. Um, yeah, this is the type of music Mary likes all the time. <laughs> kind of the acoustic rock, singer-songwriter, folk uh -huh. stuff. Midwest influences, Appalachia influences. A couple months ago, Mary made a blind buy and bought Bonnie Deer's self-titled album, and they got me into it. Really. It was really, really good. I'm glad, so we listened to a lot. Um, it is very, like, and this guy is sort of independent on his own. Um, it comes with uh, these original prints for the album. I think it was put out in 2010 or 11 because it was said it was recorded during that time. So it has this little one that has, uh, yeah, that basically shows this the little credits here. And then what's the other one that's really cool? I like this one a lot. It has like, a little truck with like all like the band equipment on top of it. Nice, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and a really, really nice, like, foresty type of green vinyl. Nice mossy green. Yeah, with the label from the picture. Mm -hmm. um, but I, it was cool. I read about it also. It was like most of the albums are recorded from 09 to 2010. He's from Indiana and Bloomington, and um, most of they said was most of it was recorded in a like a like an abandoned chicken coop. So hmm, it has like you can hear like uh, rain outside sometimes and stuff like that. Oh, I thought you were gonna say so you can hear the the essence of the chickens no. of past. You would, you would eat them. <laughs> Um, this is the first of my old school hip hop that I bought on my own. This is LL Cool J's. I thought it was bad, but I realized it's actually standing for bad. And it's actually called um, Bigger and Deffer. So that's what it stands for. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's on the Def Jam label. This is the second album. This is the old school parental advisory sticker, I guess, that I used to use back in the day. More straight up. Um, I really, really like it. I decided I wanted to get it. I was in the mood. I don't usually listen to any hip hop after the 90s, but I decided to go for it. And uh, I was playing Mary that song, I Need Love. So it's one of the classic songs to listen to. So I, this is really cool. I'm glad I have this. I really think it sounds awesome. And last but not least, I was really excited about this. This is the one that was more expensive than the others. Um, it's in great shape. This is Prince's album called Sign of the Time, which all you guys probably know really well. And it is in this shrink wrap. And I usually don't keep shrink wrap, but I know some people get upset because they usually put this stuff these barcodes like right on the album but it's not on the album so if I ever pull this off it's okay but I'm leaving it on because it has this original Prince sticker that comes from the album when, was, when I guess when it was put out it says specially priced two record set so I, you know you don't usually see that sticker so I thought that was really awesome so I'm going to be leaving this on there and it also has the original sleeves right here so I'm excited because I actually have this on cassette tape, but I never really listened to it because I don't really sit down with my cassettes as much. So I'm very, very excited to have the opportunity. This isn't just considered like one of Prince's greatest records of all time. This is usually put on like the greatest records of all time list for all albums. So I'm really excited. The only song I know is that song called If I Was Your Girlfriend because TLC covers it on Crazy Sexy Cool. Mm -hmm. and I love them. So yeah, that's most of it. Um, that's all I got for now. Mary, you want to say anything before we go? No, maybe uh, one of these days I'll show you some of mine. <gasps> maybe one day. Maybe one day. Oh, hope. Even have anything. What? Even have I do. I mean, I maybe have like ten percent as many as he has right oh, now. He's got that, show. and he's got all that. And he's consistently like getting rid of stuff too that he doesn't really want to keep. So we'll see. This is what he's done since last November, and I can only imagine what our house will look like. Five years from now. <laughs> Woo! Stay so long. See ya.